Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Akash and uh, I want to talk about uh, something from last week's video. Last week we did uh, the distal fibula fracture um, and in the comments many of you mentioned about the Ottawa ankle rules. So I wanted to jump on here quickly to talk about uh, the Ottawa ankle rules. So you know, what is it? Well, this was something that was created for you history buffs in 1992 um, in Ottawa, go figure, by a couple of emergency doctors um, and this was to determine whether x-rays were necessary or not following an ankle injury. So um, there was a major study done prior to this where it found that um, approximately 5% of all ED um, admissions are ankle injuries. And so um, they were getting x-rays for all these ankle injuries, but they found out only 15% of these ankle injuries were actually fractures. The other 85% were not. So essentially, the other 85% of patients were being exposed to radiation unnecessarily, and it was honestly a waste of healthcare dollars. So that determined uh, that made them um, create these uh, ankle rules, Ottawa ankle rules, and here's what they say. So an ankle X-ray series is only required if there is any pain in the medial malleolar zone and there's bony tenderness at the posterior edge or the tip of the lateral malleolus or bony tenderness at the posterior edge or tip of the medial malleolus or there's an inability to bear weight both immediately and in the emergency room. The only caveat here is limping still counts as bearing weight. And then the second part to this is a foot x-ray is only required if there's any pain in the midfoot zone and bony tenderness at the base of the fifth metatarsal or bony tenderness at the navicular or inability to bear weight both immediately and in the emergency department. A couple of caveats for both these is that you know your clinical judgment should prevail any of these rules if the patient is intoxicated or unco uncooperative, has other distracting painful injuries, has diminished sensation in their legs, or has gross swelling which prevents the palpation of the medial malleolar or the lateral malleolar, or has gross swelling which prevents palpation of the malleolar bony tenderness. And the other thing they also mention here is they want you to palpate the entire distal six centimeters of the distal tibia and the fibula. So this is to assess for high ankle sprains or syndesmotic injury. That's Ottawa ankle rules. And then several studies have found regarding Ottawa ankle rules, the fact that it's very sensitive, which is great in terms of ruling out fractures, and it's moderately specific, um, which is great. And here's the truth, I've never used Ottawa ankle rules, ever. And I don't think I've ever seen an orthopedist or a podiatrist use Ottawa ankle rules. And I'll tell you the reason why. In theory, Ottawa ankle rules are great. Um, they rule out fractures and they, they decrease radiation, unnecessary radiation to the patients and decrease uh, expenditure of healthcare dollars. Amazing. In reality, however, especially in the the world of medicine that we live in in the United States, where litigation is so prevalent, it's hard not to do the x-rays. Because at the end of the day, I will not be dismissed or fired or sued for not doing the Ottawa ankle rules. However, if the patient did not get x-rays that day and ended up having an ankle fracture, you best believe there's a lawsuit coming. So unfortunately, auto ankle rules are great in the books, but in clinical practice, in real life, I don't think auto rules, Ottawa ankle rules are as practical because you're always at risk of getting sued. And it's unfortunate that that's the world we live in, but it's the reality and we have to go by those rules, I suppose. Um, and which is, this is the reason why I didn't mention Ottawa ankle rules because I never do them. 
Um, but again, I want to stress that you know they are very important. It does rule out ankle fractures given by its 100% sensitivity. Um, so, so definitely do them, but also keep in mind that it does have false positives and false negatives. And ultimately, it's your clinical judgment that will be superior to the rules. So I just wanted to jump on here quickly, you know, and talk about that and address some of the comments from, from last week. I did hear your comments about talking about uh, medial malfractures. So that is something we'll definitely talk about in the next week's video. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys next week. Okay. Take care, guys.